Hey folks, silver price dropped hard today. Let's try and take a look and see what the market is trying to tell us here. Let's take a look, first of all, at the NASDAQ, um, down almost 3%, 2.7%. It was down at one point over 6%, and it was very extreme. Now, if you've been watching the last uh, few weeks, I've talked a lot about this last downswing here. And I said, do not buy the dip um, because it's on its way to the 200 day moving average. And look at this. Here's that red line. That's the 200 moving day average. It crossed it. It went way down kind of to an extreme level. And then at the opening, everything kind of went back up. And now we're just under the 200. What's so important about that? That's a level at which the big traders, institutions get bearish. And that's when they sell. So if we are below the 200, they will sell. If we're above it, they'll buy. We are right on it. I am really anxious to see what happens from here. It looks like the, it's going to swing toward a downtrend, um, but we don't know. I mean, nothing goes in a straight line, so don't necessarily get fooled by this move up. But I did manage to buy a little bit of what I've been hoping to buy for a while. If you guys watch my channel, you know I wanted to get into Amazon. It opened right at 152 and I bought it there at the open. So I was happy about that. I've been wanting to get in, but for months, it's just, I, I've been waiting for a dip and I finally got it. Now I'm going in very small and kind of in increments because like I said, I don't think this downturn is quite over yet. I think there's more to go. In fact, it may just be beginning. We may be in the middle of something that uh, can go on for a couple of months, at least into the fall. As you know, I've been saying that I think we're going to head toward a slowdown, a recession in the fall and winter. So not buying everything. I'm just buying a few pieces long term, just in case that was the bottom. All right. Now, um, other other stocks like Apple, same kind of thing opened. Remember when that Nasdaq opened way before below the 200, people were in panic mode. And that's what you were seeing is um, all of these big stocks, the big seven, right? The magnificent seven. Uh, these stocks have led us up on the way up. And when they go down, they're the bulk of the S&P and the NASDAQ, right? So if these big stocks go down, the Apples, the Metas, the Teslas, the NVIDIAs, then everything goes down, the whole index. And that's what's happening right now. You've got Apple down 4% on good earnings yesterday. You've got Amazon closed down 4%, was down much further than that. NVIDIA was down to 92. I missed this one. I wanted to get into this one, but everything looked so bad. It was down at 92. Now it's up at 100. I think I'll get another opportunity, but we will see. Um, all of them got hit, all the big names, and that's why the indexes were down so much. Now, what I really would like to talk about here is uh, silver and gold. Here's a look at silver. And again, I've, I've noted that this pattern is pretty much the same, headed down toward the 200 day moving average. It did not hit it. Silver and gold are actually stronger than stocks right now, but look where it's at. It's just hanging right above it. And if you look at gold, it's actually quite a bit stronger than silver. Look how much distance we have above that 200. The reason for that is because Number one, silver may be more tied to the global economy, meaning half of all silver is used in heavy industry and high technology, smartphones, tablets, automobile, electrical systems, solar panels, and other things. When we get a recession, which uh, if you've been watching, you know we are in a recession. It hasn't been announced yet because um, the announcement is always sort of backward looking, but we are in a recession. And when that happens, you get less demand for those things, tablets and automobile, automobile electrical systems and things like that. So silver is affected by that, while gold has less commercial uses, uses and is more of a money, an alternative money. So that's why silver has been stronger than gold and, or actually the other way around, gold has been stronger than silver. And you can see here the gold silver ratio has just been rising, meaning silver is getting cheaper and cheaper relative to gold. It takes 88 silver coins to buy one silver uh, gold coin, basically. And uh, so, so silver is cheap, but there's a reason why it's cheap, and that is because we are going into a recession.
So what else can we say about today? Well, I got walloped on this dollar yen. This thing is just, uh, we are in a in an unwinding of the carry trade. And uh, that means the Japanese are in kind of a bind. They're selling their stocks to buy yen at this point. They're in a losing situation, selling at a loss and getting their yen. And that's pushing the yen higher. That's pushing this pair lower. It was awful. It was a bloodbath. I've mentioned before, I like to look at this pair as a gauge of panic. It's kind of like the VIX. Uh, this is the dollar peso. And look at this big spike here. That's when the, the NASDAQ futures were down about six, six and a half percent. And this thing just started to go parabolic well above 20 uh, pesos per dollar. And then it came down, meaning the buying, the buying kicked in. Will the buying be sustained here? That's the big question because technically we are under that 200 day moving average, at least on the NASDAQ. If we look at the, um, at the moment, actually we just bounced above it, but the S and P is still above it, but heading in that direction, the Dow, uh, uh where is it here on this chart? I don't know what, where we are on that chart. And then on the, Russell 2K, again, a nice bounce off that 200. And look what happened here, a bounce off that 200. So a lot of times you get the bounce and it's and it continues on its merry way up. But a lot of times it's a fake bounce and you head back down. Ah, we got the dogs barking and everything. Well, I'm not an advisor. Um, I certainly don't know you or what your trading situation is. I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit tight here. I don't think it's done this downswing is still in effect. We could get a bounce up to maybe this 10 or 20 day moving average, but man, I think we, we flirted with the 200. I think we're going to stick in this area and, and over the next few months, probably uh, head for more, more downswing here. Now the next few days, like I said, maybe, maybe an up move. Um, then again, we still have that situation with Iran and Israel that is supposed to happen at any time, um, that could that could flare things up as well. We've got the situation in the carry trade unwinding. What downstream effects will that have? I mean, these things don't happen in a vacuum. When you have an event like that, an unwinding, people lose money. They have to move money from one thing to another. They, they might have to sell their silver. They might have to sell their stocks. So I'm looking to see what's affected there. Is there a bank behind this that's gonna fail? So that's more of what I'm worried about. So I would put the odds more on the downside than the up. Still looking to accumulate good de good deals. If Nvidia goes back into that 92 range, I'll probably buy it. If Amazon goes back down, I'll probably buy a little more. And I'm certainly accumulating silver all along the way. My price target is still around $35.